Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. This video is going out by request to Spencer. Spencer doesn't have the use of his legs. And so he asked me if there was a way for him to safely climb a tree on no slack using no complex mechanical devices. I'm going to be borrowing from a lot of concepts from prior videos and I will do my best to leave those links in the video description as well as overlays. So before you ask questions make sure that you're familiar with the tools in our toolbox. Starting with the recent video on basic mechanical advantage concepts for climbers. We will be engaging those concepts to get a, a, a three to one mechanical advantage system. That's a theoretical three to one system. We just measured the actual mechanical advantage of the system, which I just tied last night and took out for a test climb this morning. We just measured it. We took the force necessary for me to advance myself and we weighed my body with all my toys on and we got a uh, 2.28 mechanical advantage or 228%. So uh, with all my toys on, I'm 208 pounds, and it required 90 pounds of pull for me to advance myself. Now, I personally don't use this mes method. Today, we'll be showing how to climb using only our upper body, only our arms, and not the use of our legs. So before embarking on this or any climbing technique, please ensure that you first take responsibility for your action, but especially for a, a climber who doesn't have the use of his or her legs. Obviously, you need to get to the tree. You're going to need to have something installed up on the tree, presumably done before the season from a friend. Maybe you're climbing up into a ladder stand without a ladder. Maybe you're climbing up into a conventional hang-on stand. So please ensure that all of that is in place and you've got a plan. I won't be covering that. I will only be covering the climb. Let's talk about the system. I will unravel it. I need enough rope for this system such that it goes up and over the crotch and returns to me and gets to this point. So if I want to go over a tree crotch that's a maximum height of 30 feet, well then I need 25 times 2 uh, putting this a rough, roughly five feet off the ground. I need roughly 50 feet of rope for that. I don't typically climb with those length systems. I typically climb with longer systems, so you can disregard any excess rope in the system. But as always, we'll, we'll return to a tree with a paracord preset. Now, you'll recall there are three parts of every SRT system and one is the anchor. Well, the anchor is up to you. It doesn't, I'm not going to prescribe what anchor. You might pre prefer to use a running loop. You might prefer to use a quick link. That is completely up to you. I'm going to be using the Maverick hitch. Now, you've heard me say in all of my prior videos that you should only use the Maverick hitch when it is locked. And I stand by that. However, in my own experimentation, I do climb with the Maverick hitch unlocked and I'll be doing so today only so I can fold in that demonstration of how difficult it is to release the Maverick under load. So here I have encountered, before my rope is back to me, what do I got here? Two friction hitches and two pulleys. And I'll be moving those out of the way. That is the position they were in when I last climbed this tree and released my Maverick hitch. So simply sliding them out of the way. And now here comes my rope. So this is the point where I'm going to tie my Maverick. Again, I've told you all, always make sure this Maverick is locked. I'm going to break my rules and I'm going to send it up unlocked. Why am I doing that? Well, first, again, to, to show you its properties, but secondly, because this tree is very high. The, 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 I'm sorry, the crotch is very high. And so a, a climber who climbs on a locked Maverick needs to climb all the way to the canopy anchor in order to release it. 
and a a climber who doesn't have the use of their legs may not want to do so. So I'm actually demonstrating this on the Maverick when it, it might not be your top choice of an anchor. But it's up there, I can visually inspect it and know that that loop is showing and it's good. But now, I got some sliding work to do. I need to slide my friction hitches back into place. And I'll show you exactly what they what they are. Okay, so here are the two friction hitches that are on the system. Let's start at the bottom. This is my primary point of attachment, the second part of your SRT system. This is the Longhorn Agile hitch. And see my recent video for tending options for the Longhorn Agile. The most efficient tending option is this. This is an Octavia pulley from Rock and Arbor, and I get the, the smoothest, the smoothest tending option, and it's got some setback, right? Setback is that distance there. We want to minimize setback. It, it's simply one of the variables in the equation, but this is the smoothest option I have for the Longhorn Agile. Above it is the Longhorn Friction Shackle, and this will be where I engage my three to one mechanical advantage. So. I will remove my, I have a double adjustable bridge. I'm going to disregard my first, my, my swivel carabiner, and I will use the carabiner that's on here, because I, I just don't want to give any opportunity for anything to go wrong with this pulley falling off, so I leave my bridge carabiner on it, and I shorten my upper bridge, I shorten it to a relatively short height, and now, Again, you've got to be familiar with the Longhorn Agile and how to tie it. See the length specifications page, but again, this is, uh, or for the first time perhaps, this is 9.5 millimeter rope. It is Sterling Rogue. This is Sterling 7 millimeter cord. I used 7 feet of 7 millimeter cord for this, and as per the length specifications, I started my Longhorn using 14 inches of, of working end, and, uh, and I... I fashioned this so that it's that these loops are just the the right length. And again, see the length specifications page for all all the details. But to get 3 to 1 mechanical advantage, I need this pulley to engage this rope. And that's the handy feature that's the reason I've introduced you to the Longhorn friction shackle. This one was tied with 6 feet of sterling 6 mm TRC but we're able to open it. It's basically a soft shackle inside of a friction hitch. And it's optimally compact, and that's important because I want to maximize my vertical reach. So this is my mechanical advantage system. Let's put you in a better location, and I'll demonstrate the climb. Okay, so I'm in the system. I will extend up the upper hitch as far as I can reach and take slack out of the system. Now, I'm not using my legs. Well, obviously I'm standing, but I wouldn't be. I'd be sitting in a chair. So I'll get into that position now. And I'm gonna, I've got a very high tie-in, so I'm gonna sway a little bit during this climb. Got my guard a hitch there because I'll, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. Now, I've only got the use of my arms and so I have several options for advancing myself, and it depends on your strength profile. You can simply grab this rope and pull, and I advance a small amount, and then I'll, I'll experience that setback. And the setback's fairly significant. I only moved up about six inches, but if I maximize my reach here and pull, and if I'm willing to accept uh, you know, a little lean back, if you can pull that off, you get a few more inches. Let's watch that again. Now, I'm not using any hip thrust. I'm just pulling. Okay, but if we don't have the strength to pull with our hands, we can use a mechanical hand ascender, or we can use the guard hitch foot loop. Now, I realize uh, a, a climber who doesn't have the use of his or her legs wouldn't be able to use their feet, so it could be shorter. But it's a, a very effective rope grab. So we simply put it on as per the instructions on the Garda. 
we take slack out. And now I can put one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top, and I'm gonna put my feet towards you and dangle just to show you I'm not using them. And see, that's really easy. It's really easy to pull on that. Push this up. And if I'm willing to lean back, I'll get even more. So how much am I actually getting out of each move? Well, let's see how far I can advance this hitch. That's probably about nine, nine inches that I got out of that. Now I'll pull back. Let's watch how much I advance this. Again, it's about, I'm getting about nine inches. I'll switch back. Now, not everybody's going to have the strength to do that double move that I'm doing. One, two. Just trying to get as much as I can. And so you would be approaching your platform or your tree stand. I'm approaching a branch. So in our next scenario, we're going to we're going to take the same system. And we're going to show how we got some other options for advancing it that do involve the use of our legs. Now why would somebody try that? Well, not to sound like I'm bragging, but not everybody has the same uh, physical capabilities or size or shape. I had a gentleman on my climbing system who weighed 380 pounds and it was difficult for him to climb. I do maintain that anyone who can, who has reasonable uh, body shape and physical abilities and who can go up a set of stairs without holding the handrail, without huffing and puffing, can climb without mechanical advantage. This is slower. Uh, due to the you know the pace of progress and that setback so I don't prefer to climb this way but it is an option it's, all right I'm gonna transition into repel when I repel I'll bring down my upper friction hitch I will open it I will remove the, the rope from the pulley now I don't want to lose that pulley if I dropped it, it wouldn't be the end of the world I just put it back on I just put it back in. It's just gonna be there and waiting for me next time. And now, you know, I might have lengthened my bridge during my sit, so let's do that now. My bridge is, is at a comfortable height. And now using my lower bridge as per all of my other uh, repels, I'll put in my Munter friction hitch. And because Longhorn Ag Agile's breakable under load, I'll simply go above, grab the upper hitch. I've got a little bit of slack here so you can see the movement. And there I am. And again, I'll try not to use my legs here. At this point, I'm going to pause. I don't want to make a separate video and point out that this system doesn't have redundancy for our Longhorn Agile. You recall, I like to climb with redundancy. And if you so choose, perhaps 
uh, you know, on your, your first climb or perhaps on all of them, you do have the choice of adding redundancy in the form of a head and knot. See my video on the head and knot and why I feel it is the optimal and most compact backup for anything, whether it's mechanical or a friction hitch. But you can tie a head and above your Longhorn Agile in that location. Let's get on with it. And before I hit the ground, it's kind of hitting two topics at the same time, but I got an unlocked Maverick hitch up there with a piece of paracord on it. Well, what if my foot got caught on this at some time? What if, you know, it's unlocked. It's, an, it's a quick release hitch, but what would I need to do? What would I need to do? That's, that's as much as I could pull on this paracord without cutting my fingers. It just jams up under load. Now, obviously, we'd pay attention, but it's one of the reasons I'm even more confident about its function when it is locked. So, again, I am, I'm, I'm, uh, anyone who climbs this using this method, it's your choice of which canopy anchor to use. I only use the Maverick because that's, that's my favorite, and I continue to test with it locked and unlocked. So once I am down, now there's no, now there's no load on this, right? Now I can pull, you can stay here with me, you don't need to go up into the canopy. Now my Maverick is unlocked. I can bring the system down, put my paracord back up. Okay, so that's the deal. One take, no retake. My point here is that there are ways to use mechanical advantage systems uh, to, to help us climb. And please know that mechanic, there are mechanical devices that are going to give you better performance with less setback. And I am not uh, against the use of, of mechanical devices to create a rad SRP system. I'm completely fine with that. But the question was, can we do it with a with the non-mechanical option and clearly we can and it's just another tool in our toolbox preset is back I won't make you watch me coil the system but I ask as always that you climb responsibly and safely and uh, if you're trying something like this or really anything make sure it's well rehearsed in the backyard with a friend make sure you've thought about all possibilities and all failure modes make sure you have cell phone reception uh, if you're experimenting use a helmet I, I, uh, I can't underscore uh, how important your safety is and although this is an aggressive technique I do feel that it is safe and uh, we can eliminate all uh, failure modes for uh, moving points of attachment on the rope by adding redundancy with the head in. And so consider that as well. Thanks as always for your support.